Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, brothers and sisters, children of all ages, <laughs> welcome to a tag along discussion. I am your host, Bilal Khan. I have with us here one of our instructors, Saad Aslim. If you guys didn't catch episode one or the first part of this uh, discussion, go to his channel, check it out over there. We talk about him and things he's got going on. This particular episode, this part, we're going to be talking about Saad as and your life as an instructor. And first question that comes to mind, you've been an instructor for almost four years now or mm-hmm. over four years. Yep. And so what are some things that you've learned? What are some epiphanies that I've had? Or that, <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> no, I, honestly, I've learned a lot. And I would say um, I've actually, I don't want to say changed a lot, mm-hmm. but I've your Maybe. approach might have changed. Yeah. I mean, um, I just remember the, from the first time I met you, just the kind of content that we were trying to record. It's like, dude, stop giving a lecture. We're doing a social media video that's two minutes long. Come on, like, relax. <laughs> so one of the big things I would say is exactly that. I, yeah. I've learned the difference between um, what I call the ideal and what's real. Okay. Right? Um, that rhymes. Thank you. you. Uh, <laughs> some people are idealists. Right, and I, th- and I think there's a place for that. Mm-hmm. Like this is the ideal version of a Muslim, mm-hmm. right? And then there's people who are realists. Like this in in the real world, this is what a Muslim kind of interact with people. Yeah, this is what <laughs> this is what a, a a religious or practicing Muslim looks like. Yeah. Yes, we talk about the ideal, but we don't smash people on the head who are not exactly upon the ideal all the time. Right. I mean, right? like so somebody might say the ideal and the like. For example, I'm just thinking like in Salah. Mm-hmm. Right, you want to pray your fard, you want to pray your sunnah, you want to pray nawafil, but it's very, very difficult to do that. Yeah. Realistically speaking, yeah. it's almost every aspect of of Islam, and and just the one of the things that has really like come to the forefront for me is the fact that, um, and I often talk about this, like categorizing people. Mm-hmm. Um, I hate it now. Like I can't stand it. You okay. know, even like good Muslim, yeah, bad Muslim, like, practicing Muslim, uh, non-practicing Muslim, yeah, whatever. Um, I think that's so limiting and it, it actually hurts us because we are defining what we do for ourselves. It's terrible because mm-hmm. we've like put ourselves in this category. We've limited our own capacity and potential just by doing that. Yeah. And when we do it to others, we don't um, believe in their potential. Yeah. So I'm like, for me now, we're all on this scale, mm-hmm. right? We're on, you know, this gradient. We're all trying to move towards becoming a good Muslim. Yeah. We're all on that path somewhere. Some people are the, here, some people are there, some people are further along, but we're all like, we have the same goal. Yeah. Right? And that, that kind of changes your approach when you're giving da'wah, when you're teaching people. Um, I've learned to have high expectations okay. from people. Have people surprised you? Uh, people have surprised me. Yeah. People have surprised me. And not it's not always like what they do. It's their desire to be better. Okay. Right. So it's very, very easy to take a negative approach towards people and in their Islam and their practicing of Islam. Like, oh, nobody prays five times a day. And, you know, all these Muslims are doing this and they're doing yeah. that and nobody practices Islam. But that's one way to approach it. Yeah. Right. And you can get really bogged down and you can get, become really negative and just critical of everyone and everything. Yeah. And that's like, that's the dark path. Like, I, I, I see that. And, I, and I've seen people have gone down that path. And that's yeah. their da'wah. Their da'wah is just everyone's going to hell. Everyone's a horrible Muslim. Uh, every person is a deviant. Everyone is just horrible. Everyone's wrong, and it's not like that's. If that's your message, you're not going to inspire a whole lot of yeah, people. No, you know, it's interesting. One, one of the companies I worked at when I was the first job I had when I was in DC, it was a lo- local nonprofit geared towards educating middle school students, right? And one of the things that they would always drill not only to the staff and employees and their volunteers, but as well as the students themselves, it's like we here have a culture of high expectations. I don't care what society has told you because we're dealing with uh, child, kids in urban and at-risk communities, right? They're probably told that you're no good, you're not going to amount to anything kind of yeah. stuff. Like, look, forget all that. We have a culture of high expectations here. Yeah. We expect you to show up. We expect you to put in the hard work. We expect you to succeed, right? And, and, and you can see these kids transform. Yeah. And not, I, not only expect, but like just believe in people, Yeah. right? Like I'm always like, there's a difference between trying to guilt people into becoming a better Muslim and inspiring people to okay. become a better Muslim. What do you mean by guilt versus inspire? Like guilting someone is you're bad, you're bad, you're horrible, uh-huh. this and that, you're a terrible Muslim, um, you, you're going to hell. Like that's but that's how's it. That's not guilting. That's just like you're just berating. That's them. like yeah, exactly. That's okay. what it is. Okay. Right. As opposed to hey, listen, you have a lot of potential. Yeah. Right. And there's goodness in you. I mean, granted, there might and be some things that can improve, but like, look, we're not focusing on that. Let's fo- let's focus on what you can do good. Exactly. Yeah. And I believe in people's potential for good. And that has changed the way I talk to people and the way, and the way I give da'wah. Mm. Um, 
and positivity for me, and once again, it sounds cliche, but positivity works. Yeah, for sure. And it, it, I think it's far more helpful. Um, you can make far more progress with that than, you know, the, the, the just like, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <you're> bad. <laughs> exactly. I mean, that, that doesn't, that doesn't work. Maybe in the, previous generation right Maybe. people could be like they could force their kids to pray they could force their kids to uh fast and force their kids. Again, the, the culture and the environment that they grew up in is vastly different from what we are now exactly i mean here people have choices yeah right it's and like, you're look back in the day you, you know people around you you lived in a certain culture certain environment everyone yeah. was like kind of doing the same thing now you're living in a very diverse uh environment different ideas different ways of life different you just you're you're just bombarded with so much. Yeah. So guilting, condemning people, criticizing people is not effective. No matter. I know some people believe like that's their life, right? That's how that's how they give da'wah. Alhamdulillah. Like I got some really good advice when I came back, and that was to take things slow. Okay. Right. So I started teaching for Al Maghrib. I uh, picked certain topics, and I kind of eased my way in. Okay. Because for me, it was like. I hadn't lost touch. Like I don't. I don't want to say I lost touch with America when I was studying in Medina. Right. Hey, but you were out of the. You were out yeah, of it for, for like seven years, right? Yeah, like I would come home in the summertime yeah. and stuff. So, but it's still not the same as being like living there. Yeah. Throughout the year, seeing the problems that people are going through, so I made a conscious decision to ease my way in. Okay. And I've always one of the things that I've always held on to from the very beginning is mm -hmm. to be extremely cautious and careful before giving your opinion on a matter. Okay. Right. Um, get all the information, take your time. No one's going to blame you for saying, I don't know. Yeah. Right. Or go ask somebody else. But they will come down on you if you were wrong. Exactly. Yeah. All right. So I, there's a lot of things that I didn't speak about in the beginning. Cause I was like, you know, let me just get the lay of the land and all that. And, you know, I slowly moved my way into being a little bit more upfront about certain things, talking about certain things. And I'm really glad I did that. Mm -hmm. I learned that, um, I kind of knew this, but it became even more real for me. This is a personal thing. Um, what people don't realize is the superstar sheikh, superstar da'i, whatever, celebrity sheikh. Yeah. That life is... Exhausting? Um, it's really tiring, man. <laughs> it is exhausting. You spend most of your time at the airport. No, and, and not even that. Yeah. Not even that. It is... It's very glamorous from the outside. Like when you look in upon it, right? Sometimes I, I look at my life. I look at what people see from my life, right? If you go to my Instagram page... Yeah. You see all these like pictures of places that I go to. Yeah. You look at my Snapchat, right? I only snap when I'm traveling. And you snap right? because it might be relevant to it's your audience. Exactly, yeah. interesting. So you can, it's very easy to look at that and be like, oh man. That's I, all he's doing. I, that's such <laughs> amazing. Like I wish I could, that sounds, all these people, like all these people listen to you and this and that, whatever. That's not the reality. This is, it's a, it's a very, very tiring life. I, I'll give you a behind the scenes, yeah. right? Okay. So oh. <laughs> I always do that. I yeah. told him, I said, this is way too close to me. I'm going to, I'm going to knock it over. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> so, um, behind the scenes, yeah. right? Let's say I'm teaching Al Maghrib seminar. Let's say I'm teaching within the U S which I don't always teach within the U S within the U S most cases I leave Thursday at some point. Okay. Right. So Thursday's gone. Yeah. Um, get there Thursday night, depending how far it is, whatever. Uh, next day, give the Jama'ah khutbah. Yeah. And then um, a couple hours later, there's the uh, opening night. And then there's Saturday, Sunday teach. And then Monday morning, I fly back. Monday's gone. Yeah. So now we're looking at Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. I'm left with... That's a five-day work week, folks. I'm left with Tuesday, Wednesday. Yeah. But Tuesday... Tuesday, but, Wednesday. But Tuesday, I'm like exhausted, man. Yeah. Like I'm just like... I'm recovering from standing for like whatever, like 20 hours or something and the travel and, and all that kind of stuff, let alone if I have to travel overseas, sometimes I'll leave on a Wednesday. Yeah. Yeah. Malaysia. It's um, like 24 hours. Malaysia is just another story. <laughs> this is like, you're, there's nothing left of your yeah. week. But, um, I mean, I can go on and on. Like, I don't want to sound like I'm complaining. No, but, but there's it's exhausting. A, I mean, your the time that you spend in travel and for work, yeah. it, it's similar to, it, it's just the days are shifted, right? For somebody who's working nine to five, has an hour commute each way. Like, they get home, like, they really have more than, no more than maybe an hour for themselves each day. Yeah. And then finally, they spend Saturday recovering, yeah. Friday night partying, Saturday recovering, Sunday dreading that they got to go back to work on Monday. Yeah. It's a similar scenario, except yeah. that your weekend is Tuesday, Wednesday. Yeah, but and, you know you're doing yeah. good work. Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. Look, I'm I'm very I'm very glad for the opportunity that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has given me, and I ask Allah Subhanahu wa Taala to accept uh, the work that I'm doing. Yeah. Uh, like I said, though, it's 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 a complete like when you're in it, when you're in the thick of it, it's it's very. Th there are days where I just dread uh, 
just leaving. Mm. Like, especially after my son, my son was born. I can imagine, yeah. Um, I've, you know, don't tell anybody I told you this. I've had multiple times considered just like retiring. Okay. People are like, what? You just, it's been four years. Like, how you can't, like, what are you talking about? Yeah. Like, who, how can you? I'm like, man, I don't know, man. It's just, it's not, I, I'm not cool with spending a lot of time away from my son. I don't like, I don't want to fall into that typical, maybe not so typical, but you know, perception that people have of a da'i, of a, what, a scholar, teacher, whatever, who gives da'wah to the whole world, teaches the whole world. But is away from family. And their family gets nothing. Yeah. Um, I don't want to do that to my son. I don't, you know, I don't want to do that to my family. Yeah. So this last year and a half, two years has been kind of a balancing act. I've actually yeah. cut down on a lot of my travel. I accept a lot less invitations now. I, my Maghrib classes have, have cut down because I'm trying to find that balance. Yeah. Um, and it's not, it's not easy. What have you noticed about the different communities? Like, well, maybe you maybe take it generally first and then kind of zero in. But like, I would assume that if, like in the U.S. is a pretty big country, right? You'll find differences in culture throughout. Canada is a different country. UK is a different country country yeah Aust- I mean, you've been to australia for a class i have uh so that's another country you got malaysia so yeah. like kind of like point out some of the things that you've noticed well the first thing that i noticed is contrary to that could what you're saying uh-huh. there's a lot of similarities okay like sitting like teaching in i don't know chicago mm-hmm. and then like fr- flying across the world yeah teaching in malaysia in kuala lumpur it's there are a lot of similarities like i i don't change a lot of the way i talk or the things that i say because a lot of references then chicago (laughs) there you go (laughs) a lot of the references that i would make in america Mm -hmm. people in malaysia are gonna get them really right in australia in in the uk and you know one of when i first started traveling overseas i would find myself like pausing be like do you guys get that joke like do do you get that and everyone's like yeah we get it (laughs) especially in the uk they're like okay listen we understand. Like, so we speak English. It's like, no, it's like some of like the, the terms that we use here or whatever. I'd be like, yeah. oh, this is a different. No, but they've heard it because of TV it's and true. the internet and movies and all that kind of stuff. You know, sometimes here, like Americans and UK, they'll say something like, oh man, that pissed me off. Right? British people consider that cussing. Yeah. I don't use that word. Oh. <laughs> so my rule is anything that is considered uh, profanity or, or cursing um, in the States mm-hmm. or in the UK, I stay away from both. Okay. Just to, because it's hard to switch your, like for me, to like un like to be like okay I gotta turn these words off since I'm going to the UK yeah. or like I'm back in the states I, so my rule is like anything that would be considered um, keep it G all the way yeah <laughs> <laughs> uh, You're like, I don't use that word <laughs> I, that was that was a hard lesson for me uh, the word pants okay. right for us they're we, pants are pants for them right? it's underpants for them it's like underwear yeah so I was in class one day in the UK first time I think like first or second night teaching in the UK. Yeah. I was talking about, I was giving some example and I was talking about, you know, um, uh, some people talk about, you know, guys wearing pants and st- something like that. Yeah. And then I was like, as y'all can click, and I, I'm like, turn to the audience. I'm like, as y'all can clearly see, I'm wearing pants. <laughs> and the room, <laughs> the room just bust out laughing. And I'm standing there like, like, I'm just confused. And I'm like, I'm looking behind me. I'm like, um, did something happen? Like, Whatever, and then like in their laughter, like it was like the Amir of the Kabila, he gets up, he's like, shit, you know, over here. I'm like, oh, man. <laughs> and, like, and your face goes red. <laughs> like, uh, what are you going to do? You know, what are you okay. going to do? Anything that really stuck out to you that like... So, um, there's, I have, I, have, I have favorite things, um, things that I like and dislike about almost every place. Okay. Um, I can point what, out... What, what are your top three favorite things across the world? Across the world? So yeah, from like your travels, that from each of these different communities. Okay, so I'll point out, I'll give a shout out to uh, Malaysia. Okay. Right? Qabila uh, Ihsan, I believe. Yeah. I'm bad with Qabila names. There's just so many, but yeah. I, I, try to, I try to get it. Um, Malaysians in general, man, they're just like really chill, warm, uh, welcoming. I, and, I think and, chill is like, doesn't even... Com- finish describing how laid back it's it's just totally a, it's cool just a it's just a welcoming environment right yeah. um you, you come to this you come to states there's a lot of baggage that is attached to islam okay right in terms of you say the word muslim or islam or people want uh, to disassociate uh, yeah that or you know they they will try to put you in a category mm-hmm. or they're like you know there's a lot associated with it you go to muslim countries uh, Islam is very politicized sometimes. Okay. Islam is used for political gain, okay. for uh, this agenda or that agenda. And, you know, there's so much, you know, is a, that the a case practicing, in, uh, a practicing Muslim, you say you, you come off as a practicing Muslim, people make like 20 judgments about you. Okay. Malaysia, I'm sure it's there, but yeah. I didn't see it. Okay. Right? Yeah, you it's can, part of the culture. Th- you can be a good Muslim and yeah. just be chill and everyone's cool. And it's like, all right, you know, that, 
that's fine. <laughs> no one's like, oh, you're Wahhabi. No one thinks you're you're this or that, yeah. like Sufi. Like, like, I'm sure it's there. Okay, right? it's everywhere, but, but it's not prevalent. It's not prevalent, and okay. like, I just it's just that relaxed environment. It's so refreshing for me. I, mean, I remember I noticed that last year when I went. It, it was just yeah. like, yo, I feel like I'm here in the USA, but okay, everybody's Southeast Pacific looking, but it's just everybody's Muslim, and they're just so like cool. Yeah. And you know, one of the things that I that I saw in Malaysia is, you know, it's a, it's a Muslim country. There's yeah. a lot of Muslims there, majority Muslim, I believe. You can someone who doesn't practice Islam, like they don't consider themselves a practicing Muslim. How are you going to define that? Yeah. But, and they see somebody who's religious, they may not be religious themselves, but they'll look at a religious person and be like, "I respect that." Yeah. Like more power to you. Which is which they, they is, see it as admirable. Yeah, okay. it's like okay, you know, I'm glad you're able to do that. And, mm-hmm. You know, one day, inshallah, right? Yeah, which is refreshing. Yeah, you, you know, go to some other places. Like, I don't want to call out particular parts of the world. UK, excuse me. Excuse me. <laughs> well, sometimes people are really judgmental, man. Okay, like you know, they wanna they want they want to figure you out. Where are you from? What are your what are you what's your stance on this? What are you stand? Are you this type of Muslim? Are you that type of Muslim? And this but I also get the feeling that you. I've never been to the UK, but except you know, in airport when traveling, but uh, I get the impression that UK is also kind of like very split between North and South. Uh, just from the people that I've met. Geographically? Yeah, well, like this culture of like uh, somebody from London versus somebody from like Scotland. Yeah, I, 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 I wouldn't be able to say. It wasn't that prevalent that I, that I okay. really saw a big, big difference. Culturally, Maybe yeah. Maybe because of the fact that somebody from, the, from London, it's harder to understand them than somebody from like... Where? From like Scotland. Or maybe because I just like this. I, I have for me, it's the opposite. Oh, really? When I taught in Scotland, um, I sometimes I literally have to have somebody like translate for me. Or like, what are they saying? <laughs> like, I, I just be like, I, I don't know what your question I was. I don't understand the great accent of the Scottish people. Don't ever do that accent. <laughs> <laughs> I get. I, I, sorry. <laughs> Yo, Scottish folks, tell me how do I do? Is my accent great or stop, not? Stop. No? Stop. That's it. Done. <laughs> cool. What about within the US? Like any, any uh, uh, favorite spots? Favorite spots? Shout outs? Like yeah. I, I don't I don't really give shout outs, man, because I feel like when you give a shout out, you're, you're leaving out. Um, okay, don't give a shout out. Just be like, look, I kind of like, this is what I like about this particular community that really stood out. Okay. Um, and which is a shout out, but okay. Well, we're redefining it. <laughs> we're just redefining it, right? Okay. Uh, so you don't like giving shout outs. But Minnesota. Just... Okay. Uh, the Samadhi community is awesome. Okay. Uh, I always hear that. Minnesota, always like, Minnesota, Minnesota, Minnesota. They're just, I don't know, man, very welcoming. Um, a lot of people show up to the class and they're like, ex- they're excited about studying Islam, which okay. is great. Another place that's like that is Seattle as well. Okay. Which also has a big Samadhi community. Okay. Coincidence. I don't know, <laughs> but it's, 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 it's nice. It's, it's nice going there. I yeah. just, just how excited people are about learning Islam, uh, when it comes to the volunteers, like volunteers across the board, like I have so much respect for volunteers, something that I did not anticipate if, when I joined up with Al-Maghrib, yeah. I never thought that I would feel so dearly towards volunteers. Yeah. Right. I'm like, yeah, I'm sure I'd appreciate them, but like the amount of work that, hours, you have you have no idea. Like people have no idea, and this like I have so much love for the volunteers because, yeah. and I don't even see everything that they do. Yeah, just what I see, I'm like, man, they sacrifice so much, and I never, I never anticipated that I'm going to feel that way. But just, I, I can literally, as a person say, literally, go to literally. any city in the world that has an al maghrib qabila, yeah, and talk to the volunteers and be like, feel great. It's like these people are. I know what they're about. Mm-hmm. I know they're they, they're sacrificing a lot, and yeah. it's just I have this immediate love towards them. So that that is something you know, you know talk about bleeding purple, right? <laughs> <laughs> Being a maghrabite or whatever you want to call it. That for me is a integral part of being associated with al maghrib. Okay. I think that's one of the things that has been very encouraging for me to you know stay committed to al maghrib is looking at the volunteers and looking at how much work they put into it. Okay. Um, how can I let them down? Gotcha. Um, now, you've been teaching with them all four years. You've taught Fiqh of Chillin. You've taught Deception. Um, and I guess we can... I know the next class is still developing in yep. terms of what we're trying to do. I'm with. working on it. <laughs> but it's <laughs> most likely going to be within the theme or nature of just, you know, just American... Or not American culture, but just Muslim culture, a modern Muslim culture kind of theme, sort of. That's, a, that's a way to put it. We're, we're going to be dealing with culture, okay. right? Um, culture... And religion, okay, and what role each has. To, like as Muslims, like how much does 
our culture play a part in our lives. Okay. Um, and and how, it, much, how much does it, because in my mind, I've always seen cultures, there's two facets to it, right? You've got the aesthetics. The aesthetics being like your the food you eat, the clothing you wear, the language you speak, um, people you're around. But at the same time, there's a deeper aspect to the culture, which is which has to do with the very values that you hold and how that overlays with the way you do things, right? So uh, let's take, for example, the value of cleanliness, okay? So um, in Eastern cultures, cleanliness is demonstrated through taking your shoes off when you enter into somebody's home, yeah. right? But in the West, cleanliness, which is also a value here, but is demonstrated through having san hand sanitizer, uh, you know, mounted on every other wall so right. you can wash your hands, clean right. up your hands. Uh, it's just the culture now is how that value has been applied right. locally. But uh, but I'm just wondering uh, how that applies within an Islamic context. Look, because there's a lot of different values, right? It's actually extremely... Like, people overcomplicate the issue okay. of, of culture. And I, I know why. Because like there's a lot of bad that comes from culture. And a lot of, there's a lot of bad that gets attributed to Islam because of culture. Okay. Right? So I get it when people are very anti-culture. But Islamically, it's very simple. Take the good, leave the bad. Okay. It's as simple as that. Cleanliness, if there's hand sanitizer, as a Muslim, like, that's good. Yeah. Right? It goes along with the principles and the morals and the ideals and the values of Islam. So I would I would welcome that. Yeah. Right? So it's, that's what, and if, if there's something in the culture yeah. uh, which is is bad, we, we, we would leave it. Okay. Right? So it's not all bad. It's not all good. It's but in, in the middle. Like there's just so much good and so much bad. Like, how do you... Navigate. So that's so that's where that's where it's important to understand your Islamic morals okay. and your principles. Look, there are certain things, for example, that Islam will leave open, mm -hmm. leave it open to your culture as long as it doesn't go against the principles of Islam. Okay, and there's a lot of that. Like, give me an example. Uh, like the way you dress. Okay, right. We have certain um, principles, mm -hmm. certain guidelines, certain uh, conditions that need to be met. Yeah. Once those are met, the rest is up to you, right? Um, uh, it, it, it cannot you cannot expose your your aura, for okay. example. Um, uh, it, you have to uh, cannot be um, cannot have any vulgar messages and, and, and things like that. Once those conditions are met, the rest is defined by your culture. Okay. Like Islam didn't come to say you have to wear thobe. Uh, thobe, right? <laughs> I was going to say shalwar kameez. Okay. But or um, kameez. right. That's not what Islam said. Islam said you're you're you know it it has to be modest, right? And then modest has um, different aspects to it. But the, I guess another question comes: like modesty is one thing in one country, culture, another thing in another culture. But right? there's an Islamic definition of modesty. As okay, well. there is. So okay. that's that's some of the things that will be addressed uh, okay. in the seminar, whatever the seminar is, inshallah. Okay, fair enough. Um, but yeah, Do so we have like some sort of ETA. I mean, as of this recording, it is what end uh, of September yes, there's an ETA. It's the Universal Muslim ETA, which is. Soon, inshallah. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, can we expect it in 2016? 2016? What's, the, what's the date today? No. It's October. Oh, October? It's going to be October soon. In another week. It's possible. Okay. It's possible. Possible. Yeah. Cool. I'm getting calls from HQ. They're like, get on it. We yeah, need this. We're, we're having a call with HQ right here. Yeah, this is, this is all set up because HQ is like, get him, to, get him to get that course out. <laughs> you heard him, possibly. Possibly, possibly. Possibly. And I left it very, very vague for a reason. <laughs> Fair enough. Do you have, and I'll, I think we'll close with this. If you could teach, if you had the choice of teaching whatever you want, and you could take your pick, and this is like, I would love to teach this what would that this be ah oh, that's that's a really difficult one because you know i almost do have that with al-maghrib alhamdulillah yeah. um there's a lot that i love about al-maghrib mm -hmm. uh, alhamdulillah a lot and they didn't pay me to say this by the way um i'm not getting paid well, I'll anything tell you, when, when right now when they say that this bleeds purple <laughs> it's uh, it's true one of the things i've always loved about al-maghrib is the amount of freedom that they give me mm -hmm. uh, in terms of choosing topics and choosing what i want to teach and not only that um my the way i want to teach it okay and i think that's the freedom that they allow their instructors to have in terms of you go to a seminar um one seminar to another seminar if it's a different instructor you're gonna have a very different experience depending on the style and i mean you know, the only thing that's really consistent is the structure in terms of timings and yeah and lunch and yeah. things like that well, but actual uh teaching style what's in the class content, how, yeah how, how it's taught yeah, yeah exactly so I, and i love that about al maghrib so yeah. they have given me the freedom to to do that alhamdulillah and that's why uh, i think this this topic of 
uh, culture and how do we balance, um, you know, we're in America, we're Americans. How do we balance that culture with Islam, what Islam yeah. has to say? And that's why I think that needed to be tackled. But like there isn't one that's kind of like still swimming in your head, like I would love to be able to do something like this. Let's put it this way. The response says yes. No, no, let's put it this way. I have uh, something uh, something that I would like to teach uh, after this coming seminar. And I think that would be the appropriate time for a number of reasons, but I'm not going to say what it is. Okay, fair enough. Yeah. All right, Saad, thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. Stay, keep the that. hands away from the mics. <laughs> <laughs> fair enough. Uh, guys, if, this is, uh, if you guys haven't checked out part one, uh, where we talk about Saad and stuff he's been up to, uh, do check it out on his channel. You should see a link in the description below. And if you're watching this on the Al Maghrib channel, do subscribe. Um, Yo, give Al Maghrib some subscribers, man. Get them to go know, subscribe right? to their channel. It's just like for real. And, uh, and I mean, not that my channel is like uh, doing great, but <laughs> <laughs> subscribe to my channel as well. It's doing better than Al Maghrib, which is cool. He's like, not saying a lot, but uh, <laughs> alhamdulillah. No, I, mean, I have my loyal subscribers. Yes, his loyal subscribers. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I mean, if you guys like these episodes, the tag along discussions, then uh, do check out some of the other ones here it's in the playlist. Um, this uh, episode is only as good as the feedback you guys give and the people that we have on the show and what we can ask them. So again, Sasu, th uh, thank you for joining. Thank you for having me. And uh, I'll see you soon, man. Inshallah. Inshallah. Take care.